Welcome to the OSRS podcast where we talk about RuneScape related things of RuneScape related content creators. I am Mint Mad Cow, followed by What's going on boys? Rakes as always. And Rice Cook. Hello. And today we are honored to have Mr. Pure Spam. How are you doing, dude? Good day. Yeah, it's great to be here, man. Thanks for inviting me on. Um, excited to have a little chat about all things RuneScape and just hang with some uh, some good friends, so can't complain. Oh yeah, I'm man. Good. Dude, it's a pleasure to have you on. And uh, we get a lot of comments because we talk about PvP all the time and people say that right. we're we're not, what's the word, certified to talk about it and, oh, and whatnot. I, no, I, I, I'm I know. not too certified. Dude, <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> And if there's one person in the community that everybody knows who loves PvP, and I mean, you've done PvP pretty much your entire RuneScape like lifetime, right? You're the man to talk to. We yeah. want to know, we want to pick your brain on what's going on with PvP. Oh God, the pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is the yeah. PID master, dude. You know everything about oh, PID, don't you? Uh, PID comes in already. That's the <laughs> only thing I don't know is PID. Oh my God, I'm so trash at that. Oh, Let me to explain to you right now, real quick. Yes, please. Uh, okay, so, when you're hitting your, your opponent, based on how quickly the hit splat picks up, like how quickly it appears, depends if you've got PID or not. So if you're firing yeah. an arrow and the hit splat goes up instantly, you've got PID. If it doesn't, your opponent's got PID. And what PID Holy does shit. is, so obviously it's 0.6 second tick system. Why are we talking about PID straight away? <laughs> 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 Educate us, man. So, so it's, it's, no point, it's 0.6 second tick system, so... If you and another player like pick up an item off the ground, for example, or hit each other at the same time, even though it's in the same game tick, the player with PID gets priority. So in PvP, for example, if you've got PID, then you go to kill someone with an AGS spec. If they go to eat their food at the same time, your AGS spec prioritizes over. And equally, if you're like if they've got PID, um, and they're going to spec you, then you can't out eat it, if that makes sense. So knowing who's got PID in a fight is Really important, even though everyone memes me about right. whining How about I've been winning all of my fights, man. I did not know this. Because huh. I, 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 I don't think it's as big when it comes to hybrid in right? No, it's more it like, is. Would, would you agree it's, with it's that? It's still pretty big. It's it's not as big, but when it comes to like K potential and stuff, like you're yeah. going to have a much easier... If you wait until you've got PID and you play defensive when you don't have PID, you're going to die a lot less and you get a lot more kills. Okay. Pretty um, much, yeah. Brids just brew yeah. whenever they can. So when you when you AGS, it's just gonna let them heal over it. So I never, I mean, I knew it existed. I just always watched like a frame video. I'm like, how the fuck is he doing this? You know. So I have no <laughs> idea, dude. I, I've I've got a general understanding of Pit. The one thing I don't know about it is how often does it switch. That's what I don't know. So I think now it's like every. It's meant to be every like minute to minute and a half, but sometimes it switches more commonly. It's just it's kind of it's a bit random. So you've got to like always look out for it. Basically, if you're uh, playing some RNG, I thought it was like every thirty seconds now after the update. It might it might even be thirty seconds to be honest. It, it's uh, thirty to a minute. It's pretty yeah, it's, it's pretty eight, fast now. But the skill but, is to detect it, right? When when it's switching. Yeah, so like in risk fights, we do quite a lot. For example, like the only way to kill a lot of the really good people is just to to notice that PID swaps before they do, and then just go for the combo and hope they're not paying attention. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to start training my eye for that, man. Thank okay. you. That's awesome. Yeah, You're welcome. So can, uh, can we get into a controversial thing then? What? what, the what the dude, dude, wait, wait, wait. Q &A, yeah, let's do some let's do some Q and A <laughs> first. Man. Let's dive Thank into that in a minute. The juicy <laughs> stuff. Right, we'll save it for later. <laughs> oh man um i have a question but if you guys want to go first you can go for uh, it you go ahead man you know what my question right. is don't take it please <laughs> so i kind of got no nah, i wasn't late into the streaming community i was just maybe a year or two but by that time i believe the aoa gold squad was already pretty built and i didn't really get the backstory on how you guys oh, that's an old one a team i would like to know the lore i've always okay. wondered the lore okay the well lore first of all we're no longer together as a, as a group. We're all still like Aww. best mates and stuff. We're all still see each other at RuneFest, that kind of thing. But just as as life goes by, obviously people kind of drift apart a little bit, so we couldn't do as things as much as we wanted to. But in short, we have to go way back here. So back in pre EOC, myself and AOA Tube and Boaty were all and Skill Specs too. Actually, we didn't know him back then. We were all making content, and Tom known as AOEA Tube, there was a meme going around because he used to flower and like gamble and dice and all these horrible gambling things. Like, <laughs> I, I did too, but shh. Anyway, so there was a joke going around that he would sell his gold. He didn't actually reward trade. There was a joke, joke going around that he sold his gold in a shop called the AOA Gold Store because AOEA Tube. Oh. And so one of our friends, Harry, the, own, the maker of a uh, Rune uh, Loader, if you know that client back way back in the day, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. he basically made a website, which was AOAGold.com, which basically you loaded out, but everything's still around right now. You loaded it up, and then you have his little like his little face, 
going round the screen. You had to like direct it with the W A S and D keyboard to like move him around the gold shop. It was just a really weird <laughs> name. Open but it, picked, that up, it picked up though. Um, I don't know if it's still around now, but I'll it picked try, up. I'll try. And so we named our our group around that, and um, yeah, it was AOA Gold as a, as a meme, and just yeah, we just really we did, we did yeah we did weekly podcasts and lots of uh games and together you guys didn't know years. each other beforehand or <laughs> so we myself and tom were pretty good friends pre-uc 2012 we know everyone knows Boaty. we always we used to watch his videos we we're all fanboyed him and then we started talking online as we all started streaming on old school we met at runefest 2014 for the first time that's where we all kicked off really like we all met, met up the five of us and just had an amazing time and ever since then we started meeting up more often going to events like going to house parties that kind of stuff because we live in england obviously um yeah good times man lots of really really good memories of those guys went on a holiday as well to norway loads of times too and to croatia with elliot as well um yeah Dude, i times. remember you guys were um hanging out at the first twitchcon <clears throat> ever too that was a uh... yeah man well like i say now still now when we go to events like runefest and stuff we all have we all catch up have a beer and and all that kind of stuff just uh unfortunately like, as as time goes by it was hard to all commit the same schedule um and obviously jail was moving to australia that kind of stuff too and but um, hey, maybe maybe one day the Alego podcast will be back and we'll there we we'll go. Streams, we'll do some streams together again. Um, oh wait, is it Australia? Australian? Yeah, you don't know that. Jay, he's <laughs> ah, gone to Australia now. His um his girlfriend is Australian, so he's gone to go meet their family and and hopefully not get bitten by any snakes and and spiders. But... And kangaroos. So yeah, can, 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 can can bite. Bite. Ian, <laughs> did you guys have a podcast with those guys? Or are you just talking about like yeah, a collaboration? Yeah, we did. Oh. It, there's some cringe clips up on YouTube. There's one. The worst one is the AOA Gold rap battle, oh, which we took it in terms <laughs> of roast each other. Yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, every week on Twitch we used to do it. Um, just talking about like, the weekly updates, that kind of stuff. Which yeah. is why I was like so so keen to get onto this podcast. I'm, I'm not sad about and talked about RuneScape with other people in quite dude, a while now. So that that's literally yeah. like the the reason we do it. Like, don't get us wrong, dude. The podcast isn't like it's not popping popping. Like, we got four thousand subs, which we're happy with. We don't advertise it all too much, but like, even if we got barely any views, like, it's nice just for a group of friends that play the game to get yeah, together and just to just talk together, about exactly. the game. It's it's awesome. It's really nice. I look forward to it every single week. Like, it's oh, awesome. he's like. Yeah, He's like saying, it's just waking up the hardest part. <laughs> what have I started, man? It's beautiful. I like it. Oh, man. Right. So my question, my notorious mm -hmm. question is. Oh no. You're you're a very very sound solid PKer, which leads Thank me you. to imagine. Oh, that one, but yes. <laughs> it leads me to imagine that you've played the game for an extensive amount of time. So my question yes. is, when did you first start playing RuneScape, and when were you introduced to it? Okay, so I'm, yeah, I've been playing a long time. I'm pretty old, though. I'm 27 years old as well now. Yeah, um, I'm 20, 27. What do they call like us now? 18, boomers. Man. Boomers? No, we're not yeah. boomers. We're no, almost, no, we're no, almost no, boomers. No, <laughs> yeah, I, I call yeah, you the 20 teenagers, dude. Riggs, you're making us feel old, man. Oh, uh, man don't worry. Sorry. You're still like start, teens man. nowadays, dude. Today's time, wait, we're still young. How old are you, Rice? Out of I'm interest. 24. I'm pretty old. Oh, you're, you're, you're pretty young. You're young. You've still got a few years left before we get to your 30s. 30s are out the corner for us now. Ian looks like he's 80, and then Racy looks like he's 30. I'm, tw mean, I'm 26, man. Kind. Man, I, I'm old for my age, I'll say that. I'm very old-hearted, so... I'm you definitely... Like a bar. Dude, I'm a premature boomer. I know it already. I was thinking about it earlier, man. I was like, I'm totally yeah, a boomer. I mean, let's be honest, man. I don't understand. When you stop getting memes, young. you're a boomer, and I've never understood memes. Like, full stop. I don't get it. I'm 100% a boomer. <laughs> do, you, do you have a TikTok so account? Oh. Wait, do I have what? A TikTok account. <laughs> no, I, I don't. Dude, that's all the cool kids use. I, I don't even know what that is, dude. I don't know what that is. But like, you know, on Twitter enough, man. The Do they have RuneScape TikTok videos? Probably. Oh, please, God, no. Probably. Dude, we could break in that shit. <laughs> <laughs> man. Right. So the first time I learned what Monka S meant, and I'm pretty sure that's the little frog in the background here on our background image. That's Pepe, dude. All right. See, I don't know. Yeah, Jesus no, no, Christ, man. Dude, yeah, the yeah, first time Pepe. I learned what Monka S was was the uh, Dead Man Mansions when I was streaming and I had Torvesta next to me. That was a good time. I, it was awesome. Torvesta was sat next to me while I was PKing, and people were saying Monka S. And I was reading it out like Monkers. I was like, what the hell's a Monkers? Yeah, and he just, he laughed at me. And I was just like, what the fuck is it? And I didn't have like better Twitch TV. So it just came up as the word. I was like, I have no yeah. idea what this is. So yeah, still, I'm a boomer. You get people like that all the time though. People come into Twitch chat. They're like, what the hell? What are these emotes? Yeah, what are yeah. these words that people are typing? You're like, man, you've got to get a bit to better Twitch TV. So, uh, yo, the Franco face sees where is that right now. Honestly. Franco face really? C? What's I, like, I never see channel? that. 
I never no, see it's that. like that's it's the other ver- it's like the competitor <clears throat> to better switch TV a bit. All they oh, do yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're just notorious for cropping actual emotes into like a more distorted version <laughs> and uploading all those like the wide there. peepoos and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. The pog, you know, instead of pogger. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. Ian, did you? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Did you answer the question? I no, I haven't. Oh, okay. Kemki <laughs> <laughs> so like, Kem- Kem- warned me about this last week. He said, uh, "When you, <laughs> when you said that I come on here, you apologise in case you go on. I have to sit about just talking about random stuff." Yeah, we're, we're working on it, man. We're working on it. Um, so the question was, when I get into RuneScape. So my next door neighbours in this same house actually. I've lived here like my whole life, pretty much. When I was about 11 years old, my next neighbors were all proper gamers uh, for RuneScape. The dad played, the daughter played, the brothers played. They were like a four man team. They'd like sit on laptops in the living room going PKing together back in 2000. And kind of what their life oh, fix. Man. Like, yeah, I know, that's, right? It was dude, cool. That's, that's some. Yeah. Life there was another guy as well, like Ashley from down the road. He would come around as well and they'd like play together. And I'd go around their house and be like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> I want to get involved in this. My friend as well wanted to get involved. So we started playing when I was like years five years year four something year six in uh, england um and yeah just really enjoyed it unfortunately in 2006 or 2007 i was hacked for my entire bank which was like six or seven mil at the time i was saving for a, a santa hat which was 10 mil i lost oh, everything and i was like oh, oh this sucks so rather than continue my account which was like 84 combat at the time i decided to make a free-to-play pure and pk free-to-play from like 2006 7 till 2010 like every day getting back from school Damn. Over there, my, my PC was over there behind me. Actually, I've got some good <laughs> nostalgic memories and just playing uh, in free to play multi and stuff like that. And then 2010 11 became a member again, and I decided to like member PK 2009, maybe 2010. And then ever since then, I've just kept yeah. playing to be honest. And uh, yeah, I started making videos in 2012 when I watched Chris Archie and Boaty and sent a clip into Chris Archie, and I got my first like 100 subs. And then, uh, yeah, it just kind of like spiraled from there. Started on Twitch in pre yeah, 2012, and and here we are now. And how time flies, you know. So lucky to still be able to uh, to make content. It's yeah, really around, dude. It's crazy. Mm. <laughs> uh, that sends me down like a nostalgic path. I know, it, right? There's so much you can talk dude, about in there. It makes me think of like my beginnings. Like I remember my computer at the time. It was like the old, really old, like Windows 98. You know, the bricks, and we yeah. had it in the front room. And then eventually, because I got really addicted in the RuneScape. I'm talking like, you know, when you had the internet, there was a dial-up. It made the little noise yeah, when you plugged yeah. it in. So I, was, <laughs> I, I, I remember I could only play like 30 minutes at a time. That was all I was oh, allowed man. every day. It was what? 30 minutes. And or all someone, I, call, someone called the house and you're like, your internet yeah, goes out. Yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. And then eventually, because we got better internet, my family were like, look, you're way too fucking noisy. You need to move your computer. So I was like, okay, I didn't have room in my my bedroom because I shared it with my brother. So I moved it into the kitchen. Like that's where my computer was. I literally, (laughs) like I went from playing for years in my front room to the kitchen, which I didn't mind because at the time I was just like a fat greasy gamer. And all I did was like, I was like, hey, I'm closer to the toaster and I'm closer to the fridge. I was like, I can eat faster, quicker. It's more convenient. I was like, hell yeah, this is way better. And then you might it, not yeah. like it, but that's that is peak <laughs> gaming performance, right? Yeah. Now. Dude, honestly, <laughs> man. Uh, it was like back in those days, it was it was disgusting. I'd stay up to like six in the morning playing RuneScape and just be like, you know, I'd be PKing, so I'd be shouting a lot and stuff. My parents mm-hmm. fucking hated me because I was so noisy. But like <laughs> I, I just said I forgot all about that. Like I spent years in my front room and kitchen playing on my shitty computer for fucking years, man. The good old days, dude. I love yeah, those man. times. I think I've with the exception of like quitting for COD 4, maybe when I was like a teenager and Halo 2 and 3 a little bit, I've basically played RuneScape my entire life and I'm 27 now, like I said, and I see myself playing it until it dies yeah. because it's just, uh, I know, it's just one of them, one of those games, you know, sometimes I get upset yep. about PvP updates or lack thereof and I get a bit frustrated at the direction of the game in general, but like, I'm, let's be real, we're not going anywhere, are we? Like, Nah. No, um, dude, that, no, that reminds me. Wow. My parents used to go on all the time about me playing RuneScape way too much. It was going to yeah. be the demise of me. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I was so addicted, didn't care Same. about anything Same. but RuneScape. And I remember they'd constantly mock me and be like, well, what are you going to do when you end up in a care home? And I was just like, well, as long as they got computers, I'm happy I can play RuneScape. Like, that was my <laughs> mindset, dude. <laughs> this, this is a bit of a tangent, but like, in general, I, I, I like to read about a lot of AI stuff in general and like technology and, and the future of the world or rather the, the downfall of the world. And <laughs> um, like films as well kind of portray it, virtual reality and stuff. I reckon by the time we get to like retired age, 70, whatever it's going to be, 
we'll be able to like slide into this tube yeah, or something VR and get shit. get connected up and we're just living in the virtual world anyway you won't know what what reality is or what it isn't like dude, that's the that's the dream man i look for i actually look possible. forward to retiring dude like i look forward to just <laughs> playing video games all day long oh, but, like, man. Yeah. in my head by, by the way yeah, like, yeah. speaking about tangents something we should say for the podcast as a whole is we've discussed it and when it comes to doing the main podcast this being the main podcast with a guest we don't mind having tangents, that's fine, because with a mini podcast, we're going to be like more specific to one subject. Although yeah, on these yeah, big podcasts, we, we will cover other subjects and whatnot, but tangents, we, we think they're fine, but we're trying not to go too yeah. hard on it. Do you guys watch many podcasts apart from obviously doing your own? If um, so, like which ones? Right, so I used to watch, I, I used to religiously watch a podcast that was called The Drunken Peasants. I don't know if you've heard of them. No, I no. Haven't. but um, that's pretty Sounds much. Good, <laughs> Sounds yeah, like, yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> they no longer actually do it as a group, like the group divided, and there's two now. But I used to love it, like watching their podcast, and it was completely different. It was nothing to do with games. It was to do with like it could do with like news, like real news. It could be doing about politics or like anything like that. And it's an American yeah. podcast, and uh, the people in there, the main guy was called uh, the the Amazing Atheist, who was like a huge YouTuber back in the day. He's got like a million subs now. But, um, like, the relationship they had and just sitting there and they just got drunk and they vaped and they smoked weed <laughs> and they just talked shit for, like, hours on end. And I was so hooked to watching those. I was like, I'd love to create something and be a part of something which is, like, similar yeah. to that. Um, but nowadays, the podcasts I watch, I watch Hate Free Podcast and yeah. Joe Rogan occasionally. Same. If he's got a guest yeah, on, I yeah. like. I've, I've seen, I, like, I don't <clears throat> watch them, like, consistently, but, I, you know, they will pop up on my feed. And I will occasionally listen in, you know, if it's like a topic, like, you know, whatever it is, is like of my interest, I'll occasionally yeah. listen to a bit of the, the yeah. or uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same with Joe Rogan. I occasionally has got a good guest on also hot ones. Have you heard of that one? Oh, yeah, the, uh, oh the yeah. Spicy ones. I watched that yeah, more. Dude. Actually, if you count that, then yeah, I watched that more than the other two. Yeah. 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 Like I, I've gone through like actually a, a, whole, a whole video, you know, like a whatever, lo however long it is, like 20, 30 minutes or whatever sometimes. Mm. They had Paul Rudd on lately. It was really good. I also watched the um, official podcast, which is, you know, Penguin Zero or Critical? Maybe yeah, Critical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's seen he streamed. He RuneScape. did stream RuneScape a bit at one point. Yeah, I <clears> watched he his has a stupid, with his yo, He has a stupid monkey nut collection or something. <laughs> He yeah, does, like a yeah. million or something. The biggest yeah. one. I love that guy. I've watched his videos for years, man. But um, I feel like like with that podcast as well, and like with your podcast that you guys are doing, and like you said about the uh, the drunken peasants, the best part about this podcast is you know, people that are actually friends and like actually just vibe well and get along well, just talking about similar interests to each other. Yeah, and those are the best podcasts in my opinion as well. When everyone's just relaxed and just you know speaking. Yeah, I mean, not not to like out. too our own trumpet too hard. But something I think about quite often with this podcast is like, we all have very different backgrounds. It's like Re has barely stepped into like the wilderness, like yeah. full stop. I've so only that... in Tango, Rune PK, yeah. Rune Knight Miners. So that's that's <laughs> like a background of its own. It's like Mint Mad Cow only does PvP. And I've got like a past PvP history where all I did for like 10 years was PvP, but now all I do is PvM. It's so PvM, like yeah. we have a really nice like mixture of people here with different opinions. And it's like, mm. it's interesting because we are very good friends, but then at the same time, like if we disagree on something, we're going to go at it. Do you know what I mean? We're going to try to understand yeah. where the other person's coming from, which I really like. It gives different perspectives of the game, which I I'm definitely a fan of. Yeah, definitely. That's what discussion is all about, isn't it? If you have the same people just saying the same thing, it's just an echo chamber of it's not enjoyable to watch, is it? So Yeah, yeah. it's just a I lot agree. of cocksucking and you're right, you're right, you're right. So it's a, li it's a little <laughs> yeah, different on here, but it's great. I, I love it. Damn it, I thought that's why you invited me onto the light. <laughs> I love coming <laughs> back to cocksucking. <laughs> what? Back. All right, delete that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So so it's, the, it's my turn to ask, right? Okay. Yeah. So I've seen Wait, Rakesy's seen... been asking a question since I've been gone? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Another one. Sorry, so, Rakes, go for it. All right. So so I've seen Ian on Olive's um, my boy Olive's, right? He, we've had him before. Oh, he's Olive, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's the one defense the Iron Man, man and he does some mm -hmm. PKing. So yeah, like how did that kind of how was the transition? I, I know you mostly did PvP. Like how how was the transition to like you know, just just using your experience as a um, you know building a one defense account and then transitioning to like yeah. an Iron Man goal style, you know. Yeah, account, so I, I, I literally PK'd from 
2007, like I said, 2006, up until 2013, 14, probably 14, 15, actually, um, exclusively. So like my game knowledge was just dire, and it still is pretty bad, to be fair, but Iron Man's taught me a lot, that's for sure. When demo mode started coming out, every demo mode season, I'd have to like jump in and like start from scratch and learn things, learn how to prayer flick, stuff like that. That taught me a lot as well. Um, but I think just the best way to learn the game is through the Iron Man because you you got to get everything yourself. You've got to, like if you want to get a rune crossbow, you got to think do I go crazy? I just have to get a smithing level to get it or a magic short bomb. My account I got like I think when I first started this account I was so newbie I literally fished ten thousand sharks by hand. Like, <laughs> there, 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 there wasn't the, yeah. there wasn't the angler outfit back then, but I just sat there AFKing like waiting. <sighs> And then I did I did ten thousand U logs. I picked ten thousand flax. I strung ten thousand flax, and then <laughs> popped the U logs into U longbows. Like combined them together, out to them. Damn. It's a it's a weird sense of achievement you get from my man. It's so long, but uh, yeah, I did. It's, that, it's taken yeah, me a long time, man. Yeah, yeah. It's um, I've had the accounts since like 2015, 16. I still PVP a lot, um, like every day in a few hours or whatever. But I just can't PK all day long anymore because it's just not not as active. There's nothing really new coming out, unfortunately, or not as many new things as there used to be. So yeah. uh, the Iron Man just gave me a different goal because obviously, as as a full time content creator as well, like you guys, you can't PK as you know, Rick. So you can't or, or Mint Mad Cow ten hours a day, eight hours a day. It gets so like draining when I've done it for so many years as well. So um, yeah. oh, I started getting angry. I've been getting so yeah, angry exactly. lately on stream. I yeah, just it's can't anymore. Dude, I'm like, bitch. Be... I'm gonna start skilling. You know. <laughs> well, the th the thing is, like, as a content creator, you're there to be entertaining and you're there to like, you know, make people's days and you know, like, be a positive influence. And if like you're just getting shit RNG and no one's fighting you or you can't find anyone, if you'll keep getting away with bullshit escapes, it's just like, oh, I can't be goddamn asked. <laughs> so I completely understand. But I I've really enjoyed the Iron Man gameplay. I'm still loving it now. I'm on it right now, actually. I'm just uh, I'll, um, enchanting some sapphire rings to my oh, Zora grind. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, One defense but, uh, yeah. I, I still really enjoy it. I've got a hardcore too, but the one defense, it's uh, it's difficult. Scary. Like, yeah. A lot of, yeah, a lot of the things that I've had to do have been quite. Um, quite hard with one defense limited but olive yeah, I is, is great his, his iron man's sick he's so much right? his account's beast i keep uh actually olive joined us at uh, twitchcon in our bnb <clears throat> and yeah he was cool oh uh, but did you know he's two he's defense dead. away from two defense <laughs> two xp yeah two xp oh i think i saw him yeah. get some it was in the uh raids wasn't it he yeah was dude, he was drunk and uh he was uh he had control on with his pickaxe <laughs> yeah dragon pickaxe yeah uh yeah that was bad dude that's hilarious that's all that color it's fucked it is fucked right yeah, <clears throat> yeah not... so if we can move away from the q a my first hard hitting question for you ian Right, oh, because he's just, what the hell? This is still the Q and A. Then, well, okay, all right, but like <laughs> this, this, this is this is the This is Let to do. <laughs> this is to do with PVP. Almost. So that's what I'm getting at. It's quite a hard hitting yeah, one because I remember, yeah, yeah. dude. I remember my transition from a PKer into a PVMer, and I want to ask you a question. So, do you see yourself like? Because obviously, right now you've made an Iron Man, notoriously Iron Man, not made to PK. It's like the anti PK account. You can't loot yeah, stuff. You can't Therefore, what's the stuff, point? Yeah. So my question is, with the way that PVP is going currently in old school RuneScape, do you ever see yourself completely like transferring from being a PKer into something which result revolves around no PKing whatsoever? Like the way the game's going. So this is like uh it's something I've thought about a lot, especially in recent years. And like if I could go back like career wise as a streamer and all that kind of stuff, me doing PvP content isn't good for me. I know it does quite well on YouTube, but on Twitch, it's never like um yeah, has helped as much as doing Iron Man is. Like, I can do Iron Man with a lot less viewers, but I'm, I can talk to my chat, I can just hang out, and I can enjoy the, the progress of it. With PK, I get, it gets stressful, all that kind of stuff. I made this account actually originally when BHV2 was announced, or it was going to be announced in like 2015. So I've been waiting four years as a one defense pure for this update, which is about to come out, <laughs> waiting for it patiently, and it's finally going to happen. I've also got a hardcore. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to leave PvP, as, as like frustrating as it can be sometimes. And like, there's been no updates in such a long time as well. I, uh, I, it's what I've always played the game for. Like I said before, I was coming home from school when I was like 12, 13 years old, going to the free to play wilderness, fighting at like Fog Bank and, and all that kind of stuff in the BH Worlds and the EP system. I saw for all that stuff. And yeah, I don't think I'm ever gonna, gonna leave, to be honest. Even if it's like five people left, I'll still be one of them running around yeah. <laughs> trying to yeah. get a lucky spec off. But the, the, um, reason, the reason I ask is because, like, back with my PvP experience, dude, like, when I was in clans, and that's what really made my PvP experience was the clan world. Like, it took me from being a complete amateur, not knowing what to do, to being in a community of people that were just, like, highly focused on becoming, like, the best team. 
That was like the goal and becoming the best Brit. But like for me, I went through a lot of, you know, you're talking about Fog PK and Fist of Gothics, dude. I'd forgotten mm. about that, but I went through all that as well. But like the thing for me, the turning point was I used to like look at people in our clan and we'd have people that wouldn't just PK and they'd do skilling. And I remember being in TeamSpeak and being like, what do you get out of doing that? And I really didn't understand it. I was like, yeah. how do you enjoy that aspect of the game? And they were just like, I've played for so long. I just now appreciate it, which is where I'm at. But um, the turning point for me, I remember I was um, in Brap, the, t the clan Brap in old school. And I remember I was online and they wanted me to come on a PK trip and I was doing an abyssal demon task. And they were trying to invite me to it. It was like mandatory to be there. They were like, hey, weren't you there? And I was just like, I pied them every day for like two weeks because I was just enjoying Slayer enjoying, yeah, than what Slayer. I was doing the PKing side of things. Like that was the transition for me where I was like, okay, I don't think I should PK anymore. I've kind of lost the yeah. love for it, you know? So, so, so um, for me, like even since pre-EOC, I've had many, many account builds like Pures, uh, Zerks, uh, Med Levels. And there is a lot of, I've always had a lot of enjoyment in making those builds, like using combat calculators to try and see what stats I want to get to and how, and you know, do all these different quest lines. And I kind of thought of it partly as a chore, just like skilling on Iron Man. I don't enjoy, you know, chopping down a tree for 200 hours, whatever the hell it is, but I enjoy the feeling and satisfaction you get, the achievement of like being able to get your cut the magic tree or when you finally get that magic fang that I've been looking for at Zora. That's what like keeps me playing, playing Iron Man. Um, I don't think there was a point where, I don't think even now I'm like, I prefer PVM over uh, PVP or vice versa. I, I go through I go through phases. Like one month, I might want to PK like every day, and I'll, I'll do it because I'm enjoying it. Then I might get a bit bored, and I'll go do some some Iron Man content instead. So I think having that balance, to be honest, has kept me playing the game as well and kept my interest in it. Yeah, variety is key. Variety. Yeah. I'd say I'd say I, I'm probably quite yeah fifty fifty now, to be honest. I, I wish I enjoyed the variety in RuneScape personally. I used to do Iron Man and stuff. Like I didn't start out SPKing like you guys did. I was total shit. <laughs> back before runescape came out i didn't even know f keys existed the first hey, MMO. everyone starts right. somewhere man <laughs> no i no f -keys. later he start later you know what i mean yeah i started <laughs> yeah. all right rice but um, <laughs> that's what i was trying to say <laughs> and i remember when old school came back out and i was watching alkin's progress videos and i was super hyped about it and i just don't feel the same way anymore it's uh you guys had game stops right when you were younger uh, we had game, which yeah. is like the equivalent. It's the okay. UK equivalent. All right. Well, you remember going in as a child and you're super excited about buying a new video game or the new Pokemon and you just have that love for life. I used to have that for RuneScape, man, but now it's mm. only PKing. I cannot skill and enjoy it. I can't train. I can't even quest like that new Elf City quest. I had no patience for it. Yeah, I, I wish I could. <laughs> I had no patience at all. For, for me, a lot of the more mundane things, like you mentioned, like the whole skilling stuff, like I've luckily I've done a lot of that stuff in my can. I've got like 90 plus stats and a lot of my non combats in my Iron Man. But with DMM, it was different. DMM, every, so I did it every single three months. We started from scratch, the whole like rush, the new competition. I and mean, it's a shame that's gone now, DMM. I really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. I, I played but, um, Dead Mode as a single, and the most, the scariest thing was doing my monkey madness with the thieving area. Uh, my heart would just every oh, time because yeah. i'm yeah. alone <laughs> it's yeah it is sick though. the adrenaline you get from dmm was like nothing else on runescape you can, right. yeah, you can was... replicate that anywhere even if you're like running around in like max gear in the wilderness it's not nearly as worrying as losing your entire bank on demo that you've spent the past three days grinding for. exactly um, yeah so yeah we'll, I, I get you there we'll see what they come out with next apparently hopefully it's well, not just twisted leaks. league I, two dude, weeks. I don't like zaya i mean i've been saying that i'm not a big zaya sadly yeah so I, I guess people are excited well, about it. It's, so. it's more of a skilling and a PVM race than than anything. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, but it's game knowledge, right? Yeah, well, in, particularly Zaya. <laughs> yeah, you need so. to know a lot of Zaya. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna give it a go because of all, I, that's the best part of DMM for me was always the starting <clears throat> from scratch again and like having that race yeah, and it's an open area too and that fresh like that fresh is beginning yeah. and with the, ex it, with the increased xp as well it makes it a bit more enjoyable a little, little less grindy i'll you're give it a make go. me do it man you're gonna make me it, do it i think it's <laughs> worth giving it goes to the start for the first couple of days and if you don't enjoy it be like whatever i, think, I, know, I, I can maybe I make a video out of it or something interesting but, yeah. because you have to start off in Seiya and you stay mm. there you don't like you know you can't do your ten thousand gp you can't do your waterfall anymore you have to kind of like figure it all out on your own yeah i mean yeah. i i think if anybody were to do it with the increased xp rates the first thing you do is just try to go to winter todd get 50 fire making 
go up there. Yeah, you make exactly. money from it as well, don't you? So that will yeah, start you out. Bit, I, I think that would be a strategy right. for most people. And like, if you just want to experience getting a 99 real fast, that could be like a good um, a good way to go, to be honest. You guys are making me play this, man. I hate you all. I was not <laughs> going like, to play this. Yeah, now I'm going to try it out. Know, you're making it, <laughs> Tom and Rice, it sound fun. fun. So, um, just do the leaks or try it out. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to mess around with it myself. I, I don't know bit. that much about Zaya. Like, it's part of the continent that I've not really explored much, apart from like mm. raids and the catacombs and a bit of Winter Todd. So, like I said, I'll, I'll be one of those players that goes to Winter Todd. If I can get yeah. 99 fire making in like a day or a couple of hours, I'll probably like play it through and just see the progress I can make. Because that, that think... 99 would give me motivation to like play and having all the resources. I think that's equally interesting though. Like the one thing that I don't want to see on YouTube is just every single content creator choosing like the, the meta or the best ever route. Because when you see on Twitch as well, you see people making hardcores. It's just the same thing. Yeah. <coughs> <yep>. Boating. <coughs> Boating. <laughs> every <laughs> single Far time they die. I'm just yeah. but, You know what I mean? Like yeah. I think that that's part of the uh the interesting and the, the magicness of it. Oh so. yeah, for sure. It, it's when people set like a long term goal that isn't the same as everybody else and then they kind of build up to it, you know, like the way they build up to it's a little different. Dude, I've just thought of something, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I saw in a post about it, that pets transfer from that game mode into the real one. Can someone what? confirm that? I swear I saw nah, that in one no of the way. pets. No, 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 no. Is that a reward? Pets. No, it's pets from one league. If you get it, you, tra you can transfer to oh. the next league. Oh, next oh, I was gonna say because yeah. there would be like a million people at Winter Todd just trying to get the Phoenix if that was the yeah, case. yeah, yeah. All right, that makes sense. But but in terms of rewards from the league to the in, the actual game, those are league reward points they can buy stuff with, and then you. What you do you get over. by the way? Is there a cosmetic list? Yeah, really? yeah, it's just, okay. yeah, it's just some cosmetics. The, the most important one didn't pass. No, oh, the ancestral. Nah, the best thing is if you get in the top one percent, is it or point one percent, which you get like be trophy, that, right? as full time content creators, you get a trophy that's untradeable, and you just hold yeah. it and flex it. At the GE. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You also have. You can also put some shit in your house, which nobody cares about but you. <laughs> some, well, that's put some cool. shit in your house. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. I'm pumped. I'm gonna go buy a Red Bull real quick. Let's get it. Um, shall we jump into the bounty hunter? By the way. Yeah, let's do it, dude. All the rework. Yeah, that's. Right, so we'll start with uh, the Halloween event slash BH beta changes. If you guys are happy with that, the only other one I have is the mobile anniversary of BH hotspots. Right. So we'll start yeah, with this the one. BH hotspots were interesting. Right, do you want to start with the Halloween slash change? All right, we'll start with the, uh, the hotspots then, I suppose. Yeah, it's just Halloween event, you know, as always. <coughs> do, your, do your Halloween event. Have you guys done <laughs> a Halloween event? Okay. I have not, but yeah. I watched just... 25 Buttholes video and some really got one. Chat. Oh, I'm going to yeah, watch it. It's pretty good. I love his videos, man. Um, yeah. It says two goblins are wearing bed sheets, so it's sold it to me. I'm getting in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Runescape, the only game they can get away with putting bed sheets on things. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you that don't know, so, currently live in game. If you guys want <laughs> travel to this location, was it's the chicken pen just outside of Lumbridge? You can do the Halloween event. Uh, I've not done it myself. You've done it, Ian. Have you? No, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> I never do any quick, it's, 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 I always forget to. It's a 15 minute thing, dude. It's not. Yeah, I mean, it's just a Okay. It's, it, it's pretty self explanatory. If you guys want to do it, it's live in game right now. I'm sure you get like a couple cosmetics. I'm assuming you get Halloween masks because yeah. yeah, pumpkins. It's the same pumpkins. Cosmetics. Yeah, every yeah. year. So if you guys are interested, log in. And I, I'm absolutely certain you can do this in free to play, right? Yeah, yeah okay. all the time. Every season does free to play. <clears throat> Okay, so we'll move on to the juicy stuff, the Bounty Hunter reworks. Now, I'm sure, Ian, you played a lot of this, considering you're very big in the PvP scene. Uh, I logged in, but I logged in because I wanted to go kill um, the Triple Jads. <laughs> so I didn't do anything yeah. in the BH. <laughs> I, I logged, when it came out, I was on holiday, but I have logged in once or twice to have a little look around. Um... Hmm. Wait, you're killing what? Sorry, <laughs> you went uh, to kill triple jads, dude. I wanted to see what. It'd be oh, like on... to practice. Yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to see what it'd be like on a, a one defense, but oh, it was yeah. only six jads. Six so... jads. I legit nah. thought you just said green drag, so I was like, <laughs> Why are you <laughs> killing green <laughs> dragons on you to test server? <laughs> <laughs> New video. Oh man. So, Ian, you know a lot on this. Would you like to give a bit of a, a in depth? A review of what the bounty hunter rework is what they're planning to okay. do so in short it was originally pitched in 2016 or 17 and it was announced at runefest unfortunately it wasn't delivered then it got 
set back another year. It was re-announced at 2018 RuneFest. They didn't have enough of their dev time again. So finally, it's been re-announced this RuneFest, and it should be out in the next couple of weeks. What the BH rework is, it's going to be a completely revamping of the system. So currently, what you have to do is you get a target, you go kill the target. If you've got an emblem on you, you get a chance of receiving an emblem, and it also upgrades your emblem every time you kill a target. They've scrapped that. What they're having now is like, basically think of Slayer tasks, but with PvP. So you might have a task like, get a kill using a ranged special weapon, or get a kill with 200k GP in your inventory, or get a kill without using overheads or not using any prayers at all. So it's just supposed to like diversify the, the combos and the metas that you're using. Um, they're also changing the profitability. They get rid of the old store, I think. So every time you get a kill, which is a bounty hunter target, for example, or if you get uh, one of these tasks completed, you get points, and those points can be used on a reward shop, which gives you, I think the only reward that actually passed, or one of the only things, is the mysterious loot crate box, which is a bit like, think of it like a winter Todd crate, but you get PK specific items. So you might get like some sharks, some brews, or some ammunition or whatever it is. They're average like 100, 200K, I think. So uh, yeah, mm. in, in general, it's just meant to kind of mix it up and uh, make hopefully BH a bit more fun again. Um, and then also the, how you talked about the, what was the, uh, the hotspots, which is- Yeah, that's another, pa that's another page. Yeah, yeah, I, can, oh, I, can page. I have it. I, I haven't comment. seen this yet, so okay. I don't know anything this is, about this. This is no, pretty we talked about this, dude. We talked about this. Remember? No, we didn't. I don't. No, think yeah, we well, did. no, no, not like the update. We we t remember talking about suggestions. Oh, yeah, yeah. We 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 did say that if they made hotspots in the wildy that like rotated and stuff, that'd be great. But yeah, I don't yeah, know what so they've yeah. done here. I've not read this yet. So what so is basically, this about? basically every like I think it's an <clears> hour or an hour and a half, ninety minutes. The hotspot will randomly or will change to one of the other random places. And, awesome. Um, and basically, if you're in that hotspot, you get triple points, which is a ridiculous amount. So basically, you kill someone that's your target with the with the the, the thing you need to do. Let's say kill a target by using overheads. You do it in that hotspot, you get like a one mil loot, even if they're risking like almost nothing. No, the balancing that's of it. The balancing of it is a little bit, I don't know, iffy. I don't know if they're going to nerf it or not. But from what I've heard so far, if you're on a kill streak, you kill a target there, you're going to get like 1.2 mil. Which is oh, man. a lot. Um, yeah. A lot of those spots. Mm. A lot of those spots are both multi and single. So like you could have people <clears> multi areas, could have people in single areas, and they're all like in areas which you'd probably bring. Obviously, NH gear. It's not for like edge PKs of Darox or anything like that. It's tribrid setups. So Mint Mad Cow's gonna be a happy chap. Um, <laughs> and it's only one world as well. It's only on the BH world. So you have clan versus clan action going on all the time, twenty four seven because it's the best way to make money in, in, in Bounty Hunter and PvP. I think it's really exciting. It sounds really fun. And it should... Oh, yeah. uh, it should I like a this a lot. This is... Yeah. They even got the uh, Sir Pugger Emblem Farmer spot in there, number 13. That's kind of cool. <laughs> 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 oh, I love his videos too. That's I, such an obscure like spot, dude. What the hell? I, that's man. quite a... I, Why didn't they make back... the volcano a spot, man? They got yeah, the rogue castle. <laughs> Imagine having a clan fight there at the volcano. Yeah. I, I think the reason why I chose the spots is if you look at them, like for example, six, it's mostly multi, but on the right hand side, it's single strips. You can go singles or like the Dark Knight's Fortress or Green Dragons. Like there's multi there on number 11, the bottom left, but there's also singles at the Green Dragons. So like, oh, they, good they, they, they balanced it pretty well. So you, if you're a solo PK, you can still go out there. Always there's a, there's a PJ timer as well. In these worlds, yeah. number so three and number five, you're getting fucked up, though. You're... Yeah, there are there are some, but yeah, <laughs> that's, totally, what um, also. Sucks. that's yeah. when you put on the yeah. rag robes, baby. You I mean, just, <laughs> and you pray. There's only one, two, three, four, five locations on here where if you're a single PK, you just don't go to these here. Yeah, e every lot. other one offers a single mm -hmm. alternative. I I like that, and the mixture of the yeah, two, like in number eleven. That's sick, yeah. man. I, I really like the idea of that. You, like, there are going to be like well. clans sat here around the uh, the dark. They will be, yeah. Fortress, yeah, and yeah. there are going to be you greedy go ass kids single PK and an Arims trying to snipe them out in Morty, and they're going to be getting de speared and shit. Gonna, That's going to be awesome. It's going to be really cool. Man. I can't wait to see it. day of release, like all the Twitch streamers and stuff. It's going to be. Uh... Yeah, we need to we need to make an army day release, man. We need to make an no, army for the skill specs is gonna lose so much money on that day. I can't oh, wait to see him rage. <laughs> so I mean, so the profit like... itself is just gonna be to kill people in the hotspots and not go for the like not get like the reward crates necessarily. Like... So so sorry, when I said you kill people, you just get you get I think three times more points, which is still to use the on the reward crates. You just oh, get okay. more reward crates basically. I think oh, they're okay. average so like hundred times. Okay. Yeah, which I, I guess before it seems like a crazy amount to balance the whole thing around. I think three times is maybe a little bit um, 
overzealous because obviously BH has always been about Edgeville style and like yeah. always been the pe some people do go deep wilderness and fire like you know lava maze and stuff yeah, for the most part it's edge I mean this is going to be that, completely different that's something that we did discuss and like I was saying personally when it came to BH I was quite sick and tired of only really finding fights mm. in the Edgeville line mm -hmm. um so like for me this is honestly everything I would have asked for yeah. personally I I think it being three times the reward of killing like a bounty hunter target down in Edgeville like to give people the incentive to just actually roam around yeah, the wilderness exactly. I, I honestly don't have a problem with that whatsoever I, so so i'm an edge style or pvp world pk i, I usually <clears> do 1v1 like without overheads no mage and all that. I, I do as well a bit of not tri but i might prefer that style of like high risk and stuff and even though this isn't for me personally i'm still going to do it I, I would still love it in the game because we've, we've still got pvp worlds for 1v1 fights if you don't yeah. find people at edgeville and that kind of stuff and it's just it's going to bring so much so much interesting content you're just packing loads of people in one world that are all yeah. roaming around and you've got like clans and also there's gonna be a broadcast when it changes like 10 minutes before five minutes before so you have a certain clans like every 90 minutes like a massive clan war that happens they're all trying to take over a certain spot and like and you know God, i'm excited before. man i'm excited Dude, it's, for this. it's gonna be really fun this actually sounds like an adventure which i yeah. really like oh, and like if, if you think of the name bounty hunter it's like you're it's in the name you're supposed to be hunting a bounty it's like instead of it just being the predictable oh they're more than likely just in edgeville like this is like damn they could be up at the fucking rogues castle, that's a really good point you know like the name, at, you're man. actually hunting somebody and obviously if it is any of these that are specifically in morty like you're gonna have to have a clan to back you up and it'd be worth it if the uh the bounty points are giving you like a mill kill then for sure you're probably gonna be uh, incentive incentivized to like get a clan of some sort i'm sure like those shitty clans like tata -ta, the clan chat they're gonna be They'll opened be... up and stuff like it's gonna be a fiesta man yeah. i like that that's cool yeah it's it's gonna be sick the only thing that i think is missing is it will be like some banks or something in the wilderness yeah like fog bank or it used to be or like old clan wars bank or bounty hunter bank like they would mm. help break up certain areas you have like clans that would go into them and then try and go outside and get hit by another clan or whatever yeah, um, but, that, but yeah, that, but yeah. I'm excited. The, only, the downside as well is there's no uniques apart from yeah. on Twitter. I tweeted at Jagex uh, Gambit, who's been designing this and doing this, about the possibility of a PvP pet to come from it. Oh, and he, put, he put he put the eyes emoji back at me. So they haven't always <laughs> polled pets in the past. They've only sometimes polled them. So they could probably get away with not polling a pet because they know about people spite voting no to PvP, and it might be like a one in one K from Mysterious Loot Crate. Yeah. But imagine yeah, like yeah, imagine nuts. like saving up enough points to buy like a thousand and doing like a case opening kind Dude. of thing almost. What, like, what, like what could it be? Top rates, it'd be so fun. The pet. Yeah, for um, wilderness. I, I think it'd be it a little room Sebo on the floor. You know? It would have to be something to do with the skull and cross uh, cross arms. Yeah. So, Maybe like a skeleton. Yeah, or it should be a skeleton it, falling. But 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 there an ancient staff and a hat on. Dude, so oh! <laughs> there's a, sick. obviously oh, there's already the Vetti on pet, which is a skeleton. But if they made it like a revenant skeleton that followed you around oh, or revenant, something, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool. cool. Oh, a yeah, revenant really dog. Like a revenant dog. Yeah. And you could give or it like a, weapons yeah. a whole, bro. What, what if imagine, you could just give cool. it like an eight? Oh yes, my god. Dude, imagine That's if amazing. they didn't pull this and they did it to spike PVMers and just made it a revenant PVMer that you could transmog into like different Iron Man gear <laughs> sets. <laughs> I was, I was like, about to say someone might really looking at a clue scroll walking along following you oh my god that'd be amazing i, I really want to i really want to see a really small little spade or something that follows you around or maybe like a, maybe like a maybe like a character oh. called graceful with a rune pickaxe oh. like eternal glory or something like that just a dude in snake skin and a glory you know yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> who's your friend over there oh that's my pet now, I really hope they do add something special. Though. A revenant dog, I wouldn't. That sounds cool. So, Comparing this to um, old BH, do you guys yeah, think it's going to be more money per hour or less see, GP per what hour? What was even OPH skills? rates like? I, 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 for me, it was good. seven mil an hour. So, Dude, I, I think was this it? will seven mil yeah. this will reward the dedicated and skillful. And like the thing for me that I hate about the current BH, like I think I speak for most people here, are the emblem farmers. It's like they're literally just taking advantage of the system. And with this oh, yeah. system, it's going to be a lot harder for them to be well, able to do that. Not impossible, the, but it will be harder. Yeah. Well, for the for the hotspots, it's 50 <clears throat> combat minimum requirement to actually access. Yeah, them. And, and if, yeah. you're, if you're over 50 combat and you're going to deep wilderness, you can get killed by level 100. So they're not going to be able to boost it that way. Because yeah. those spots are always going to be the uh, big. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I do, I do like the idea. Changing. It's always changing. So yeah. Just capitalize. Exactly. They can't spot. just bot it, no. 
And I do mm. like the idea of like uh, giving PKs that are, that are better, like more loot and stuff. My only concern is that to get on a kill streak, you've got to be either like five kills or ten kills without dying. It kind of encourages the whole safing meta or spec tabbing meta because people just will, will, they want to go on those kill streaks to make the most profit possible. That's yeah. my biggest concern of it. And also profitability, like you said, um, if the yeah, noobs, if so the noobs are doing way. it. Yeah, if the noobs that are trying to do it aren't getting kills, and if they do get killed, they only get like a maybe 50k, 100k extra rather than like a mil, like some people on streaks will get. I think it'd be really badly balanced because then they'll just be discouraged to to continue. Um, yeah. But I'm still excited, man. It's gonna be. They might. I think it will definitely have rebalancing when it comes out. But either way, I mean, get be on for the day of release because you can make a lot of money. If yeah. You, uh, if you get. A lot I know of a lot of people look into these updates and always compare like GP wise. Mm -hmm. And for skillful PKers, bounty hunter, like, you know, amenity and stuff, that would be at least 100 mil a day, right? It's insane what you can make. But personally, as somebody who doesn't really need money anymore, just wants to have fun, yeah, I just hope people are open to this because yeah. it doesn't seem like it's going to be more GP per hour, but it does look a lot more fun. And on top of that, let's not forget, like, this right here isn't just scrapping the old bh system we have so while this is happening obviously you can still have your bh fights down in edgeville you just won't be rewarded the free x points so and you can still teleport to targets right yeah, yeah. Uh, so like it's just a <clears throat> matter not of... being able to do that <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, i think the the uh lingering or hidden issue is just would just be the amount of people participating in this whole scheme of thing right so like would it bring more people to do this, right? That's kind of like what what See, what it well, would that, require. I think the underlying thing there is pro the, the problem of PvP has been for years is just the whole losing items. You don't, you don't lose anything on death in the main game, obviously. So everyone's so accustomed. Yeah, the comparison. I, I, yeah. I want to say like entitled almost that like they don't. If you go to the wilderness, you shouldn't be killed by PKers and stuff. Like I'm doing my clue scroll. It's like you never know what someone's got on them, kind of thing. Like people are going to kill you anyway. Oh, so yeah. If you don't want the risk. The reward for going in the wilderness then don't, don't be risking it kind of thing and i think it's the only place now in the game where that like that actually applies more risk equals more reward so yeah yeah i think i we think were... if, if the if the reward is right and people like, even if they're really big noobs if they can go out there and occasionally get a kill maybe they're risking like 50k only but it doesn't matter but if they get occasionally get a kill and get like a few hundred k or they get a crate and they get like a two mil emblem from it or something they're like oh my god this is awesome it would encourage them to keep going because right now if you're a new PKer, you are not going to make any money. Like, there's you just lose. You just die. You have to die a million times, and not many people are prepared to die that many times. Especially when, like I said before, you don't lose any money from anywhere else in the game. No one's. Oh, yeah, really it's hard to get a kill. It, it, some people are gods, yeah. or the third parties, or in general, just PJers. It's it's borderline impossible. Even for me, I'll have a struggle. Like I'll go an hour dry, deep building, not getting a kill, yeah. just because every time I'm close, teammate hits off. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't imagine being a new person trying to PK. <laughs> I remember when I learned at Green Dragons, I mean, everyone was shit. <laughs> you know, everyone would just die to you, water staff. That's another reason why I think they should bring the uh, the banks back to the wild. Like, if you look at that map there, you see where... Do you guys know what Sperm Hill is? Or yeah, like I, Chaos I Altar? No, but... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Sperm Hill is right here, dude. Sperm Hill is right there. I'm going to elaborate. It's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's okay. It looks, like, it looks like a sperm and it's on a hill. <laughs> anyway. You know, <laughs> sure. All right. Um... But he, where, where East Dragons is, basically. If they put like a bank like towards the west, where his cursor is right now on the screen, that could be like a hot spot for new PKs to go kill bots and learn how to PK and occasionally fight other PKs. And then you get the other, the yeah. better PKs and then go after the stuff like that throughout the world. I think it would be awesome on all the world. I'd be um, down for anything that makes Green Dragons active again. Yeah. Anything. Bank, whatever they need, mm. slap it in there because Green Dragons has never been drier. I mean, really th have. this is <laughs> definitely going to make the wilderness more, it's going to give it more variety. Yeah. And like, I can guarantee Dang. these multi spots right here. Like, they're going to have clans. Like, this is going to be a oh, clans yeah. territory. They might yeah. rotate it out and they might war and stuff. But at the same God, time, I, I, I think, like, if you got a target here in the Boneyard, hmm. it's like, that's a place a single PK realistically doesn't want to go. Because it might be slightly single on the strip here, but the majority oh, of this is all multi, if not the whole thing. Yeah. So you're going to get a lot of kids telling about, uh, telling to Corporal Beast, running it up, and, you know, you might have a target in here that's with a massive clan. And you might try and like magic shortbow DDS them out, so you're risking nothing. And if you do get that kill, like you know, you're rewarded a mil, so it's worth that's the what, risk. That's what I hope yeah. it is. I hope it's just I hope it's a bunch of clans in Edgeville, all like advertising, and then you join a random clan, and then suddenly they're like, "Hey guys, in five minutes we're gonna hit," and you've got like twenty people that you've just not met before, thirty people that might be friends even, and you all go together, and you're like, 
do I help my team out or do I try and snipe my target quickly and teleport away? There'll be lots of noobs that are like trying to get into Yo, it that way. And I think what it's if, be awesome. What if there was a way where, uh, let's say, you know, the hotspots in the multi area, what if there's a way for this game, for the game to help you kind of just grow up with random people and you just get like a cape? You know, like the team cape, right? Like you just, they just auto get where you, you know, have you wear the cape. So we yeah. go in, it's like, oh, yeah. you already know who from, your team from what is. I yeah. From what I remember back in like For the sure. old days, so like 2007, 2010, when I was BHPKing in the worlds, they were always so active. And the way that you got into it was just literally people would be advertising because there, there'll be little noob clans that want to grow bigger because they need friends. And, and that's the organic way that I guess any MMO grows or any like why someone would join a clan in the first place or join yeah. a guild on other, another game, you know? And I think when the clan system comes in particularly, that'd be even even bigger yeah and like it'd be cool because then they could have like a little sign up board or something on in Ezreal, yeah, exactly. like oh yeah uh you know this hotspot's like multi do you you know do you want to be a part of a clan or something so you can like actually stand a chance because stuff like that and then they can apply to it or whatever yeah and you that's, make that's cool you make idea. good friends for it man like i know that like mint you've had some really bad experience with clans and i'm sure i, know, I love clans have. they're the nicest I, people I, I've I ever had a I know. meeting. But like, yeah. I, unless you've been in like a close clan, like you don't really experience the relationship you have in a dangerous area with other people. Like when you know that people have your back and you're in like the wildy man, like it's it's a feeling which you kind of have to experience. The yourself, nerdy brotherhood. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Seriously, seriously, dude. I I was talking to my real life friend the other you, day. Buddy. You know, I was talking to my real life friend the other day about PvP, and I went on a massive tangent. I'm not gonna do it. I was going for like an hour just talking about my <laughs> love for PvP, close. and I was like, "This is how it began for me. I started in Bounty Hunter Craters. That's when I was fully statted to be able to PK. I did PK in before BH Craters, but I had rubbish stats. I don't even think I had barry love, so I didn't really see myself as worthy of stepping over that ditch. That's how I viewed it. Right? I joined like the lowest tier clan I could because. Back then, clans, and it's still the same now, unless people can vouch for you, you're not getting in a good clan because it's like, well, who the fuck are you? You're a no-namer. You might be trash. You might bring, like, you might make us look bad or you might be a spy, you know? So you start from the bottom. I started in a team called Team High Quality, and it was Bounty Hunter Craters, and they were like an Arim's clan in the center of BH Craters. Yeah, that were just in, dude, and then you'd attack someone, yeah. and the target was 2v1. And, exactly. And those guys were evil. But, fun, but, but, but the evil. thing is, this was a clan that anybody could join, right? And I'll tell you this, man, that was a clan where nobody had your back. And I'm saying, like, you'd be in the center, <laughs> and a massive team, like, it could be brutality, it could be unique. A clan would rush in, it could be rot, and as soon as White Dots appeared, your clan dispersed, right? Gone, yeah. and you were just left on your own. And it went from that, so you were in a team which is like nobody had your back, to then you'd make friends in that clan with people that actually wanted to stand and fight. And then they realized this clan fucking sucks. I'm going to a new one. They would vouch for you to go to the better clan and you'd work your way up the ranks in the clan system. And in every clan system, the higher up you got, the closer the community was. Like there's some clans that will not even take a second look at you unless you know like three or four of their members and you're a known PKer. It just built a community, you know, and it did on, keep on PKing alive. Yeah, on that subject, look at there. I don't know if you can show it on your screen or not, if that might mess up the screen region. But there's some nostalgia for you. One sec. Let me... Oh, look at that goddamn fist. Oh, it is dude, beautiful. Look so at those me. skulls. Oh, that's the man. old VH creators. We used to sit in the, Bro, in the I... middle of them. No, Did you guys ever see... watch um, uh, Lord Makeup Darkbow videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The only one, dude, those were... He would just go into the crater and forty-eight, forty-eight, poor little people. <laughs> dude. <and> they... <laughs> oh man. <laughs> do you know what? that that takes me dude? Right. So the first time I ever stepped in Bounty Hunter Craters with Arims, right? Because jumping from Mystics to Arims is a different ball game. It's no longer I'm risking five hundred K, I can die. It was I'm a hybrid now. I've got to prove to my team that I'm worthy. I remember yeah. going into the Bounty Hunter Crater, I was so nervous my hands were shaking i was trembling right absolutely shitting it like the first time you killed jad in your life right because i was like there's so much pressure i'm risking so much my team are dependent on me and i remember i walked in that crater took like two steps out some deboer deboed me like a 48 48 <laughs> lost lost the max set 
instantly. Spawned outside the cave. Dude, I spawned outside the cave and I was on like a team speak with that clan, team high quality. And they're like, Rixie, where's our hybrid? Where, when are you coming? I was like, oh, I'm still gearing. I just lied about the whole thing because I was so embarrassed. But as soon as I lost that first set of Arims, my nerves completely went. I was like, okay, I know what it feels like to lose that amount of money. You know, the pressure is off. And the next time I geared up and walked in, I just went straight in. Admittedly, I went in with like half Arims, half Mystics the next time, but I built my confidence up, you know? Like the whole thing's an experience, man. I, I love PvP. Yeah, you were probably on the video I was watching, man. <laughs> I probably <laughs> was, I down. probably was, man. And like, Have you guys ever killed people in Bounty Hunter craters when there was a, uh, you know, the trade the tra was not a thing, right? Have yeah, you ever killed yeah. people that dropped like Rune Guard armor and shit? Yeah. Yeah, that was the yeah, safest way to X for back then. Was you yeah, that was me, that. bro. That's how I did it, dude. <laughs> oh my god, I was, a free, I was still a free to play PKer back in in those days in the bounty hunter worlds yeah. on the creators, and I remember like rune simis were thirty k, rune twages were fifty k, and if you got lucky enough with enough EP, you'd get one of the corrupt dragon weapons. And for a free to play PK with like a like a two mil bank or some something like that, you get this three mil item that's worth a hundred rune simis. You'd be like, oh my god, I've hit the <laughs> jackpot, baby! <thing." laughs> I'd be so happy about it. <laughs> Didn't uh, rune items go up when F2P came to old school again? I remember oh, for rune bit, 2Hs. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah, for, yeah I remember like 2Hs up. being 40, 50k, and skimmies being 20. I mean, yeah, it was above our value for a little bit for Dude, sure. Dude, like, yeah, I, 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 back in those days, Bounty Hunter Craters, the Saradome and uh, rune set for free to play was worth rune like Sarah, a solid I mean, 5 mil. Yeah, Saradome Sar yeah, was, was five mil. I think Zami was like three to four mil. So yeah, like, of and stuff dude, like that. I, I was a I was a member. I used to member PK back then, but I used to go to free to play just in downtime, just to do Saradome fights and free to play, just because it was easy money. It was like you could take kids for Saradome. It's five mil. Five mil is five mil. And back then, <laughs> like a Bandos God Sword was twenty, and you know yeah. that was a decent item to have having a God Sword because God War Dungeon had only just been released like a couple months before. BH Creators came out. I know mm. that because uh, I lost my BGS, which I paid 40 mil for on release. Yeah. In Bounty Hunter to yeah, like rot or something, dude. Wait, uh, it was 40 mil on release? That's not actually bad. It's only gone down. Yeah. It's still like a well, fair bit. It was literally, like I remember paying year, 40 mil for mine. Yeah. The first year, God War prices, like Armadale was like 150, Saradon was like 100. Mm. Like, God, I miss having that economy, yeah. man. I really Yeah, Zami was really like do. 30, 40, and Bandos was about 40. For for the longest time, yeah. yeah. Talk, talk like about the economy, year. bit of a weird move. What do you think can be done about the OSS economy, if anything? Do you think like it's too late what to do you, change? What do you think about, like, what, what do you think I, is bad about it? I mean, What's bad? I had an idea. Yeah, yeah. GP's, not it's too, GP's almost too easy to, make, to obtain now. Yeah, like, yeah. There's okay, so many well, three to five mil GP mm -hmm. per hour methods. Yeah, yeah a lot of it, 100% just comes from uh, people using ults. I'm not even going to lie. Oh, There's yeah. Too many people ult rune dragons and too many people kill gargoyles. Alt revs. I mean, I saw yeah, one of the yeah, raw yeah. alts, and he had like yeah, thirty had, like, crossbow loot tags. Dude, did you see that? I, I think I think yeah, what they can see or something. That was mad. How much was, was that in total? Do you yeah. know? I don't. God, I have no damn. idea. Bills though. Yeah, the rev Bills. farming isn't as bad just because it's limited it, to a what? few worlds. It's limited to a few worlds. Whereas gargoyle alts, they go every world. Rune dragon yeah. alts, they go every world. Yeah, but the amount so they make has got to almost duplicate I, what the gargoyles make. I mean, it's it's like a it's like big, but it's not like gargoyle level you know it's not like Maybe. i mean it's I, not I, rune drag i mean it's definitely not because uh, there's they're only limited to like total worlds i, I think so. there's a lot of ways to look at it like in terms just, of the economy yeah, yeah. like we we've got a lot of um gp sinks now like you know the jew arena gets taxed for example yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> all right, but helps, like, definitely helps to get. I, I mean, there, there's quite a few Thanks. more, but oh, talking about like why is everything so cheap and whatnot is like the meta's changed. So like back in the day, like back then when the God Sword was like 40 mil, obviously it was new, it was shiny, and people just wanted to experience it. But not only that, there were a lot more PKers. Like the community has shifted. We're not so much PvP focused now. It's a lot of PVM stuff. So it's like, why is so, the AGS only 14 mil when it used to be 150? Well, that's clearly yeah. because there's no use in PVM for an AGS. There's basically none. It's not as useful as half of the items you got, if not 90%. Yeah. And it's specifically used in PVP. Yeah, like that yeah. in itself just screams yeah, like, I that's wanna... why it's not that much. I guess. Yeah, I, guess I, I, I clarify, right? Because well, right? like, pure, pure spam, you're talking specifically the value of gp right not not necessarily the price of a but, certain well, item i guess i guess both are kind of oh, they're okay. tied uh, together yeah. so like specifically because, yeah. specifically gp it, it, the problem is is that jagex has made it 
a trend to just kind of give every monster sustainable GP rates, like, you know, average GP rates, right? Where they just rely on alcohols, which is flat money. It's like, it never changes, right? Robin, you need so like, it. if you kill gargoyles for an hour, you always expect this amount because it's always flat GP. And obviously a lot of people have shifted to PVM more now. So like, uh, those things, those, those monsters that give a lot of GP constantly are being camped a lot. Like who doesn't do Slayer nowadays, right? So many people do Slayer. People ult yeah. that shit all the time. So like the amount of GP just from those things, those places are so consistent. It's not like killing God Wars, right? Where it's like, oh, I get, you get nothing good unless you get a Bando shot, right? So everybody's just, you know, getting GP like crazy. So yeah, so GP rate's probably gone up. Like the amount of GP coming to the game every year has probably gone up like crazy. Even though we do have, you know, the gold sinks, I don't think it's like really enough to really, you know, stop it from, you know, exponentially going up, right? Do you think it's ever going to change then? Do you think it's just doomed now with the... Like, no, I mean, like, like how we... Pers like, you know, it's just an opinion, right? How we feel about the True. state of the economy. But, but at the same time is that you don't... I mean, in a real world, you don't want, you don't want like hyperinflation, right? Like inflation for, for like real world, it's like ideally you just want a few percent max. That's it. A year. I don't even know what this game's like, but I'm pretty sure it's way more than that. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be well, surprised it's if it's like 50% inflation every year or something. Because I don't, what is Because like you can kind of use the real world trading value to help gauge, right? Because like when Old School first came out, it was what? Like one mil was like $10 or something. I don't even know. But but what is it right now? Like one mil is like $1 nowadays for people. Yeah, it's a lot less. I, think, I think it's less than that, dude. I think yeah, like... yeah. So that, that's how you can tell that, the, you know. Which brings us to our sponsor. No. <laughs> yeah, now the inflation rate. In this AOA go. Yeah. Hey. yeah, the inflation rate in this game is definitely like pretty damn high. And it, it only makes sense because like ever since they decided years ago to make skeletal wyverns drop like an insane amount of alcohols, ever since that day, They've decided to do that for pretty much everything else, right? They decided to buff gargoyles because gargoyles used to not give you like five hundred k an hour. It used they to be like them. I had no idea. Yeah, it used to like it used to occasionally drop a rune full helm, and that that was your alc. Once what you know if I mean, they you had get, like, like a full, full helms attached. What if they had a full reboot, right? They're like, <clears> yeah. all right, uh, this monster only drops rune bars now. We're taking it from the drop table. Oh, they won't be able to it. So so yeah, what? I mean, the, I mean they the could really, do that to every yeah. monster to the point mm -hmm. where they have uniques and some other drops because i mean vorkath is yeah. fucking easy it doesn't even need three million yeah yeah so, so like for example rune yeah. dragons right if you kill one rune dragon you're guaranteed ten thousand gp just because of the rune bar drop right yeah but then it also crazy. on top of it every, every few kills you also get a rune item drop too which is another 10 to twenty thousand gp right so 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 the the biggest problem is that jagex is really too used to just you know making everything drop rune items making everything drop alcohols because those are flat money right those are guaranteed gp it's not like a bandos item where sometimes it's 30 mil sometimes it's 20 mil right it's like a rune lake is a rune lake that's 38k that's always going to be 38k it'll never change so so they, they keep doing those so really the only way to make the the whole like inflation thing curb it a lot is to reduce the amount of overall like consistent items you yeah. know, that come from monsters but really that's, that's really the only way that's I, the only way i don't know if they're yeah. they'll be able to just be like i i don't realistically see that happening but i think there are things yeah, that yeah, can be yeah. done to improve it and something that i've just thought of which we've never actually spoke about or talked about we've spoke about there being punishments for when you die at certain bosses and whatnot like yeah we might have overlooked this so in pvp it's like if you use void fire cape Dragon Ooh, Defender, etc. You yeah. have to fix the items because they're oh well, they're considered they're items that you know you don't lose, so people don't get them. They get cash instead. You have to repair them. Why isn't there a system like that for PVM? It's like well, if you're killing a boss with no risk, simply make it so if you die and you're in full bandos, for example, you have to pay to fix those items. Like you don't lose them, so everybody wins. But if you're bad with those items. You're, you know, you're, you're taxed for using them yeah, effectively. Yeah. So, so racy, racy, racy. So Can we, we go we to Bob Sucks? The whole, dude, they would yeah, have to hire an artist to make every armor broken. Yeah. That'd be dope. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we don't even need to do that. We could just do the universal tax, right? Like we talked about, like the, if you bring enough gear, I think the max, like in a PVM situation, the max you have to pay is a mil. I feel like that's the most fair. Yeah. Right. And then like, if you're a noob, obviously you don't pay anywhere near that. You, you might pay like 10K, 20K, whatever, like depending on what you're wearing. Right. Yeah. But if you're going to wear like full bandos, 
you know, the rape here. Like if you were, if you're, if you're doing like a hundred mil, 200 mil plus setup and you die with that shit, you should at least. Yes. I mean, if you, you die, if you die yeah. and for some reason, your Elijah's not in your inventory because you're risking that much. Like it should cost a shit ton to fix that because you shouldn't be well, dying. You with should your pay a mill. I mean, you should just flat out have to pay a mill yeah. for the guy I mean, that, that like holds your shit it, to give it back to you. Because the way I see it, people aren't going to be happy with a lot of things. Something I wouldn't be happy with is degradable armor, right? So I love the fact when you get a bandos set, it's not a DH set, for example. It's not going to degrade. It's there. It doesn't cost you money to use. Yeah, I think the However, simplest attacks. I, I would be very happy with, like, if I die with it, having to fix it the same as you do in PvP, because you're, you're effectively using it to your own benefit, right? The better gear you have, the more expensive gear you have. In most cases, the better it's going to be at killing something. Therefore, there should be a risk for using uh, for using that. I mean, because at the moment, like, if you use your barrows, if you die with barrow pieces, you just flat out don't use them. It's like an untradeable why yeah why is so, that like we've gone from it being it like, completely breaks to like you, it just yeah. doesn't break i, I feel like inventory. the whole broken option stuff is a bit too much because then you have to like they would have to make it for every single item uh, you know what i mean the, the, like the whole because like you can assess how much wealth you have based on g prices on your setup right but they just need to make it so simple it's just one guy he holds your shit in, in a place you know somewhere thematically makes sense you know and if you die whatever your, your gp value is that you lose You'll you'll have to pay a certain percentage of that up to a mil, right? Yeah, I think that's, that's the cool. easiest because that way they don't have to go through every single item code and shit and change yeah. it and create are a new still, texture. Yeah, are they still working on it? The um death mechanics. Really, I've not heard. Yeah, honestly, it, it's one of those things where they talked about it two years ago and then they just forgot about it. It's like the right. bounty hunter thing. Yeah, right. So they'll probably yeah. get to that like a yeah. new grave idea in 2020. I'm feeling like yeah. they will. Like it's gotten to the yeah, point where yeah. they're gonna have to. They're gonna something. have to. Yeah, because yeah. think about it this way, right? Like there's, I think there's two big problems with the way people treat PvP. The first one you talk about is simply the unfairness of it. Is that like people are so used to PvMing and like losing next to nothing, and then they have to go to PvP for any reason. They're like, oh my god, I actually lose stuff now. It's like the dynamic is just not fair, right? Dude, so that's this could problem. fix so many yeah. things right there. And, yeah. like, and, then you, the, I, and then the second, right? And then the second rise. problem. Uh, Minty, let's I, get it. I, like, I know, yeah. I know, you're saying it'd be a lot of work, like recoloring. Like it, every no, item would in the be, game, it, it, it would make, be. Just, but... make them just, just put a black and white filter over them, dude. Yeah, exactly. Just make it darker. Bravery, and that's pretty much what we got. It just yeah, dims I, the I color. Just think, I just Crazy. think a universal system. I love you, man. So but he's talking about like attacks, not like broken items. Kind of like you pay a gravestone, right? That's what Rice yeah. is talking about. Yeah, yeah. You, you talk to broken the items be cool too, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think broken items would take too much time. Yeah, I just think broken items would take too much time to do the same thing. And yeah, like, th definitely. think about it. That could improve so much stuff. So like, if people it would, it would. if people aren't very good at Vorkath, like they're going there for the first time, are yeah, they gonna risk? Are name. they gonna risk like their full void and whatever? And like, if they die, they have to pay a hundred k fee plus a one mil tax on top of that. Or will they go in there with just black dehyde and they're just like, screw it. I've got like a hundred sets in the bank. You can have it. You know, because yeah, like, it, it's one of those things where like. Yeah. I think for us and for the, the health of the game in general, yeah, like it has make, to everything makes everything makes sense. It has to happen. It has but to I just happen. think as a business, they'd have way too maybe they'd have way too much pushback from like the community being like, but but well, why are you paying all my money on like Iron Man? But, I've lost all. But money. I think I it's just the most people are just entitled yeah. at this point. Dude, the thing is, oh, yeah. this they the don't know the video game. A big mm -hmm. part of the challenge is getting removed, right? Because like, you're taking no risk whatsoever. But like, yeah. I think a mill's pretty fair. Yeah. It's not like. If you it's it's a thing about this way, right? If you die with a two hundred mil risk, paying a mil isn't the end of the world, right? That no, just that's just kind of right. like telling you, hey, look, man, you got to be more careful. You got to play better. Yeah. Because if you don't, you'll lose a mil. Which you uh, know, look, if you keep doing it over and over again, it, it'll be a big problem, it, right? You 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 die from it. You you learn from it, and the, you know, I mean, your money loss is going to be yeah. Better. Minimal, right? exactly if i can chip this in real quick i know you're saying it's a lot of work and all of this but like yeah. we're talking about the game's integrity like this isn't just like an update integrity. which is like a new fucking raid free like this is something which would actually help and fix a huge portion of the game no, like, I, this I is know, something that the game is missing you need to do that to to have the same result you know what i'm saying i just think being being able to get your stuff back from some dude after paying the the right amount is good enough yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, and that, that, you know what I'm saying? that's what I'm saying. So, like, there are shortcuts around it, and yeah. that could be one of them for sure. But it's like, I, I'm just saying, like, anybody that says this is a lot of work and it would take away from other things, it's like... No, I, well, it, it's but the thing is, I'm saying relative <laughs> to another option, which is the same. Which yeah, no, the same 
Dude, right. I'm, on, I'm on the same line. I'm with you on this. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, like, for anybody that would defend Jagex and say it's not worth doing that because we want this, we want this, we want all these new updates. Like, this is something that the game needs right now. You know? Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. backing you on this, like, 100%. Yeah. Like, even if it was just that as a shortcut, uh, even a temporary solution, like, that would be huge. And that would obviously Sorry. make people be more, um, what's the word? They, they'd be more cautious so, when they're yes, learning things yeah, for the first yeah. time. So I'm, yeah. I'm very optimistic that it will happen eventually because it's going to get to the point where people will realize that this game has gotten so much easier. Because this year alone, I think people have realized a few important things. First of all, third-party clients have busted. And guess what? Jaggers actually, you know, are they're finally doing stuff about that. They are actually addressing the limitations, specifically. Integrity. Like yeah, exactly. They're actually bringing back some integrity, right? So, like, we're not just letting like, always buddy and, like, Runelight Plus and all those crazy clients just, like, do yeah. whatever they want, right? They're actually doing something about it, which is great. So that's awesome. And people are actually, like, you know, on board with that. And then second one is account security, right? We just talked about the whole, you know, backup codes and stuff. You, you know how long it took them, right? So many years to, like, kind of come up with it. And they're finally, like, showing us results, giving us real information, like, mm. you know, things that we can actually, you know... <clears throat> feel and feel confident about what Jags is doing. Like, you know what I mean, they're like definitely slowly taking about their game. I think, yeah. I think one of the big issues, if inflation is a big issue, which I think eventually will be in, in terms of kind of like the wealth, you know, the wealth mentality between like dangerous and non-dangerous. Cause like back in the day, it felt very dangerous. We don't have to make it that dangerous. We just need to make it feel like there's a bit of danger everywhere. Right. Yeah, so I remember we can bring there that used to be a lot of danger. That back. Yeah. I was scared. Now I'm not scared. Yeah, yeah. Back then the danger was maybe a little bit too crazy, but like I feel like if we cap it on one mil for like the best setups if you die in the future, that I think that'd be a great that would be a great yeah. balance for sure. Remember when there was no GE, yeah. right? What happened yeah. to the people who fought to never have that in the game? Those guys are just right when third party uh, clients came out, they just died. They're like, Yeah, I like this. <laughs> I like the easy easiness of the game. What happened to those guys? I man? think it just made yeah. everything more convenient because I was one yeah. of those people. Yeah, they did. I, 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 I like the G. I, I did I like the G. Okay, I think the G was a necessary evil, but well, I'm, well, I'm not talking about time. like the G. I'm yeah. talking about how uh, easy has gone. No, no, I'm talking about those guys fought so hard to not have it in the game. Like oh, they cared so much yeah, about the yeah. game back yeah, in the day, yeah. right? Yeah. And now, where did those people go? Right? I feel yeah. like they just <clears> died. Here's what they happened, could. dude. They got used to it, and then ago. they kind of just forgot about it, you know? Boys, I actually Maybe. have something right now for the people watching the podcast. Uh, if you got Pokemon to this card. point, if you could name just five, because let's be realistic, the old school team's quite small. They're limited to resources and whatnot. If you could list five things that you think the game would dramatically improve or benefit from, what would they be? And I'm talking, you can put economy, you could put like, we're talking about either some sort of grave where you have to pay tax on getting your items back, things like that, whether it be third party clients, etc. Five of the things, the top things that you think could significantly improve the game right now. And I think that's something that we should all do, to be honest, like, because being realistic, there's a million things the JS could do and should do, but there has to be like a limited amount of things which would just be like, bam, that's an issue right now. It's significant enough that it would have a huge impact on the game in a positive way if something were to change and just like get it out there and be like if you guys were to try and work on this and people agreed on it like this could have a huge benefit for the game like we're talking about these huge things we're not talking about like a raids free to give us more content we're talking about fixing what we currently have and making it better for everybody and making the game more long lasting so mm. I'm I'm already very happy that Jagus is finally dealing with two of the biggest issues, you know, which was uh, controlling third party clients, and and also protecting accounts, right? So those were two big issues, two big issues. There, so so there's not as there's not as many things I can really complain about at this point, other than, you know, potentially uh, the 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 economic state of the game, which is very controversial because it's not there's no real standard of what's good and what's bad, other than maybe inflation. You can argue inflation rates, but and and also the polling system, the threshold system with it, like those. I think, and all, of course the death mechanics too. I feel like those three things are probably my biggest gripes, and the other two has already kind of been pretty much been solved by Jagex, which is great. You know, yeah. props to them for actually doing that, man. Finally, but yeah. My biggest. Gripe, I think that's it. Those two. If I could get one thing changed right now, it'd be removal of the dual arena. 
<laughs> really? Like just like entirely? Yeah, Whoa. I'd like to see it go all together. Well, think about you... it. I'll explain. So, I don't think in the first place that the Dolorina belongs in a fantasy medieval game in general. Because, mm -hmm. like, maybe 10 years ago it did. Maybe, like, 10 years ago, like, fighting other people for money, that was a cool idea. Except if you look at the current state of the Dolorina, it isn't that. It's just, if your max account, it's a 50-50 gamble coin toss, pretty much, which gets people into gambling, gets people into a bad addiction. It's just overall negative. It's not a beneficial thing to have in the game. There's no skill involved either. If you're not maxed, and if you're a normal player, you have no chance of getting odds or even having a 50-50 chance. You're going to be giving odds the whole time, and you're more than likely going to get cleaned. And then, like I said before, I you know get addicted or buy yeah, bonds or whatever. It, what it's if, just a not it's just not a good thing on the on the game. The health I in general. It, it, just, uh, it if causes they did a lot remove of it, if they did remove it, what do you think would happen? Like, uh, you know, there was think, um, what dicing think, flowers. Do you think something else would pop up in its place? Well, in general now, still, like, there's there are lots of, like, black market. I don't know if you guys talk about this much, like, black market stuff, but there are obviously, yeah. like, gambling sites, not naming any names and stuff. That yeah, do make ten, like, yeah, That mm -hmm. make six-figure sums, which you think is, like, completely wild, like, a month, is you think is just, like, so obscene for, like, small gambling sites. But there's a lot of money in gambling because a lot of them scam <laughs> and a lot of them... Oh, yeah. People get addicted and like lose a lot of money from it. I, I saw an article as well, like MTX, for example, and RS3 is a big problem about it. There's been like a government uh, yeah, looking yeah. into it in England. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're I'm sure, yeah, they're working on dealing with that. Yeah. So, for example, like people are spending like £5,000 a month, like their whole wage pretty much, with like crazy amounts of money every single month because they're just addicted to it. And I'm sure there are many, many people that do all are in the same kind of situation. Oh, I've yeah, known people, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've known people that have got into like in real life debt, lost like loads of money from like staking as well. And it's just, I just think at this point it's about it's about time something changed because um, mm -hmm. it's just yeah it's just it's just not there's no there's no benefits that come from it really like it's just all negative I guess the only benefit I can see personally is seeing skill specs rage when he loses money <laughs> it's kind of funny but yeah. well and you got the tax too which I think is that, pretty that's what, that's what yeah. makes, but it kind I, of sucks now, dude, the taxes. Uh, it's almost like the dual arena is a good thing for the game people look at it like oh it's a money sink it's like. I don't Dude, think it. I'll, I'll say something. Something I agree with you there that I like. I don't really have a problem too much with the dude arena, hmm. but something you've just said that I'd like to change is like instead of having all of these filthy rich people that I wouldn't say they lack skill, but I'd say there's a number of them that do lack skill. I'd like to see people that instead of just getting lucky at a coin, co a, a coin toss and getting super rich, having to like legitimately make their money and like putting their stamp in the game like that because. There's a huge difference between like right now I'm doing a one bill series, right? And I'm up to like 200 mil and I've built a fairly decent account. There's a big di hey, there's a big difference between like just going and making 200 mil in an hour at the jewelry and which takes no skill aside from having a maxed account, which let's be honest, if you're on the black market, it's not difficult to come by one. And what it is to actually make something yourself, whether it be through PVM, skilling, yeah. PVP, like it takes skill. The jewelry does yeah, not take so skill. I'm 100% with you on that. I've, yeah, I've remember they like, did the uh sorry, uh what were you saying? I was gonna say I personally have no like beef against anyone that like or like think downing on people that make like bank like Spark Mac, for example, getting filthy rich from doing it. I don't think that, that's something wrong with that. I just think overall the negatives, like I said, the connotations of people getting yeah, involved in gambling and, and yeah, it's it's just it's just either you get really stinking rich and it's like the game is no longer fun for you. It's not a game anymore. You've got like you can buy everything and you've done not earned it yep. yourself. It takes away all the sense of achievement and kind of I don't know, just like you just yeah, no, it, it, it ruins anymore. it for people. Uh, either that, realize it. or you yeah. lose your whole bank and then you're cleaned and then you don't want to play anymore because you've lost everything and the only way you want to make it back is through like staking again. Or so I, I just, I yeah, don't know. I think, I think it, it, it's, it's, it's a really it's, uh, vicious. Yeah, sorry. yeah, it's a cycle, isn't it? You're right. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle because like I know a lot of people do. What they do is when they get bored of the game, a lot of them I, are very it. self destructive. They're like, okay, well, I guess I'll just stake and then if they get clean then they quit yeah but they, they don't yeah. realize that they will come back so that's a problem i, I will come dude, back i think the part to that which great. is also self-destructive is that i've been there i know pure spam got clean for like his bank a few days ago we've, we've oh, all been there. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's a sudden change but, yeah. but <laughs> i i think the thing right there which is self-destructive is that actually being in a position where you're bored and you go to double your bank Having double the amount of cash you have, will give you, it will give you a temporary amount of satisfaction, yeah. but that goes after like a day. It's like, yeah, I can afford Less a Tebow or I can afford like a Scythe for like something extra. And then yeah. after a week or two weeks of using it, you're just back to the same old, ah, oh, well, I could really yeah. do with this item. Then you get clean. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So it's well, it is really self-destructive. 
Yeah, yeah bad for yeah, yeah. me getting cleaned. I will say that I've had this opinion long before I got cleaner for many years. I didn't want to just just say it. Like, like, yeah. Ever yeah. since yesterday, you know. Nah, <laughs> I, know, I just know too many friends that get bored and then they're like, "All right, let's fuck my shit up," and then they just we all know we all know people. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Definitely, it's, but uh, that, that's what I'd I do. What, what are you guys? Sorry, I took ages talking about Dual Arena. What, what would you guys remove or add to the game that you think would be like game changing? Um, I think. Before having this conversation about the uh, economy for Old School yeah. RuneScape, I hadn't really ever given it too much thought. I know that there are a lot of activists that are very like yourself. You talk about it quite a lot. And I would say that you're an activist. And I've never really looked into it, but hearing you actually talk about it and understanding like, you know, the detrimental effect that it could in the long term have on the game, like now, like that is literally on my brain. And I'm thinking yeah. something definitely needs to be done about that. 100 percent i really i really hope so but i think he is going to he's gonna make him um yeah, yeah at some point because like yeah, no, so many people, I hope yeah or this year whenever I just, I just want to see it happen because he's he's the man to tell the story so to speak and to get like yeah. I, I swear the only way things get changed really in terms of like community is, is from getting the whole community to like push together and to like say we're yeah. not happy with this um and this is tin, tinfoil hat here obviously the dual arena makes jx a lot of money as well like, I'm not yeah. saying that's why they keep it in the game solely because people that get addicted by bonds and stuff, but that's probably part of it. And a lot of people that it's are not there. a bad thing for them, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, it's exactly. necessary. It's like to them, it might be a necessary evil. But so, so I think, I think we can all come to the, 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 the acceptance that there will always be some big issue at hand with the game. Because, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like the dynamic, right? You can't, everything can't always be so good. Yeah, but but like you know, we're slowly chopping down the issues that we've had for a while. Yeah, definitely. And like now, we can kind of make way for some of the other harder to detect issues. I guess the, I the think, more. I think in this this next year, like twenty twenty, yeah. like what Mod Sween told me, he said, once all this game integrity stuff is is sorted out, and <sighs> once all of this account security stuff is sorted out, yeah. we can start focusing again on like the more need. Like, once the, the once the yeah, yeah once the clan system's out too. Like they're, they're doing a lot of infrastructure stuff right now, I think. Good. Um, just on a more positive sure. note, yeah. Sorry, we've got negative there about damn it, really this the game is terrible. Well, <laughs> but, yeah, um, no, I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty optimistic now that they've actually yeah. shown me results. You know, by the end of 2020, yeah. I think it'll be very yeah. different. I hope. Going yeah. back to my analogy that I used the last podcast or whatever one that was, RuneScape is a boat. And they can keep adding on to the boat, but it's really good that they're fixing this piece of shit because it's not going to swim. You know, yeah, they need it some needs dog. this they need before you add anything on it. It needs all of this. It yeah. really does. Yo, y'all need some WD-40. <clears throat> you know, like, <laughs> 100%. I also, WD by the way, this right here uh, about the unofficial clients, we're not going to delve too deep into it because we're going to keep this for when we do the mini podcast at some point this week. Uh, so yeah, we will get to this. We will cover it in depth, but we're not going to do it this podcast. Just a heads up. Um, dude, it's Pepe. <laughs> I think we've been talking now for God. I think it's been like two hours, man. So it's, it's gone really? on for quite a while. An hour and thirty. I think an hour and thirty. An hour and thirty. All right. Are you guys happy to wrap this one up? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty happy. Also, okay. do you want to end on a more positive note, though? I feel like I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, I, oh, I don't yeah. want to take I don't it away. Negative. If people like watch no, the video, fuck the dual like, arena. Oh, Ian's, <laughs> Ian's so fed up of PvP. <laughs> no, the Iron Man gets burned out all the time. Like, like, I'm loving this right now. I just want to say, personally, <laughs> I think this podcast was about sixty to seventy percent positive, and then thirty yeah. percent about yeah. it, concerns. Concerns. It wasn't like super like bad. Dude, I, like, I, I'm, the, I'm not the, the way critical. I see it is that we're all very passionate players. We care about the game. And if we truly didn't give a shit about the game, we would just sit here and be like, the economy's fucked. They should remove uh, dueling and not give I mean, any well, explanation we why. Like, we've given explanations. We've even given, like, potential solutions or ideas for solutions. So we care. Like, that's the bottom line. We just want the game to be long-lasting and enjoyable for yeah. everybody. That is, like, coming from the bottom of all of our hearts, you know? It's like, we're yeah, not talking about... has chances. We're, we're not Lots talking about chances. the economy because we want to go to Armadale and the AGS to be 150 mil again. It's because we want the game to be here in five years' time, 10 years' time, 15 years' time. Like I said at the beginning of the podcast, dude, if I can be in a retirement home playing this fucking game, I'll be a very happy old man. Like, I I'm want this game to work around. Virtual reality, walking through the <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So, dude, look, pe people know, I, I think the people that really listen to us and they take away from this, I, I think they know that when we bash things, it's not out of hatred, it's out of, like, 
hope and love to be honest with you yeah. it's just you have there is like a love hate relationship isn't it like you gotta have that there has to be a little bit of hate there for things to improve it's yeah. just it's, it's just how well, it is yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you guys, man, but this is like the nicest I've been to RuneScape on any podcast. So I'm good. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? This is okay. about the nicest yeah. I've been. So I've always. I mean, I. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on. So, oh, okay. Um, I was just gonna say I am not been excited for RuneScape since like LMS was released, and then that kind of died out very fast. So the new BH Hotspot actually had me feeling tingles during the podcast. I, I haven't, been, I haven't been excited for something yeah this year until now other than like twitchcon so this is <laughs> the best podcast yeah. so far it, it's got me excited I'm, as hell. i'm excited as well awesome. I, i've realized something in the last few years of like content i'm excited as well of streaming and that especially the last year or two now pup's like it's, it's slowly dwindled it's no updates until bh2 has come out oh yeah um, i sometimes get a bit negative in my streams and i know it's like I said before as content creators we want to be positive and, and a positive influence and like people watch our streams to be entertained or like to relax or to get their mind off work or whatever real life shit's going on they don't want to watch a stream where someone's you know flaming out that no one's around or that yeah. it's dead and, I, it's like, and all this stuff i feel you yeah. man i I'm, feel I'm that -conscious at the same time i want to make sure that people yeah. understand. no i'm with you on that because yeah, every that. day you know what i hate when people it's like eight or ten times a stream what would you do to fix the wilderness and i'm like i don't want to talk about it because it's not yeah. going to come into the game and i'm super passionate so i get triggered and then yeah. i get asked that again and they're like okay be stingy then i'm like bruh it's not going to happen in the game i'm yeah. not going to give a 10 minute rant about what i want and then get sad about it i, I <laughs> definitely tried myself to kind of like this year in particular my goal for the year was like to let go of the things that i don't have control over so whether it's like pvp update specifically or the, the state of the game in that regard or or whatever you're else is going on. on full rune for the 10th yeah, time and exactly. you're sitting there biting your lip and you're like <laughs> <laughs> but uh it's important to focus on the things that you can control like yeah. the smaller things yeah. um, i, I don't think like there's... how you present yourself that kind Dude, of stuff i don't think there's anything wrong with going on a rant about something you dislike i think it's just you being honest because like if you're sat there in three years time and this is metaphorical but like say for example mtx has came into the game the game is just like completely different if you sit there and you're streaming and you're just like, hey, this game's awesome and you're just sailing along in the ship and you're like, hey, MTX, we can go do a spin if we want. You're fucking bullshitting. And to be honest with you, like, that's not somebody that I would want to watch. I don't want somebody that's fucking real and is you're like, right. this is not good for the game and this is why. There's nothing yeah, wrong with voicing explaining your opinion. Explaining why it's been a good it's been a solution, you know? Well, I think me and Ian are just kind of done with the whole aspect where we don't think the game's properly <clears throat> balanced or it's not active as we want it, but can... complaining about it all the time is not it entertaining. No, or... you, just no, it's not. You, got, yeah. you just have to be critical of it. You know exactly. I mean? After the first time I complained, it. maybe that would have, you know, but just like every day. You know, I'm, I, I swear yeah. to God, I tell my viewers, I'm like, it's ha it's hard to be a PvP streamer and be happy. It really is, you know? <laughs> You're going to turn me into an alcoholic cool. or something. You should, <laughs> you should, you should make an Iron Man, man. man. Like, honestly, it's... Yeah, he I does. Iron yeah, he has a decent Iron Man. He can always <laughs> play that if he wants. What's but... your Iron's name? Oh, God. It's uh, all by myself, but B-Y-E. You know, spell oh, different. Oh, oh, yeah. you, you, oh, you you were drunk and depressed the day you made that. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Whoa, that's your Iron Man. Yeah, I played like years ago, dude. I used, I like well, I said, I didn't start as a PK. Yo, he played during the Aloha days, bro. It was 2K total, bro. Yeah, I got hacked for like 700 is. mil, then I rebuilt oh, again. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There, listen, I think there are so many things that I'd love to go over with you, Ian. We're definitely going to have to have you on again because this has oh, been a really, I, I feel like this has been a very productive podcast and quite insightful, man. I like picking your brain, but um, let's wrap <sighs> it up for today because otherwise we're going to be on right. two hours. Ian, where can the people find you, mate? What are the social medias? Shout yourself so, out. Twitch.tv slash pure spam. I stream five to six days a week uh, on the Iron Man or the PKing and uh, twitter.com slash Ian Spam. Um, and then I want to start YouTube again. I'm not on YouTube in about eight months, but I've just finished editing my first video of my rebuild series. So hopefully that's out this weekend and I can start with the, the weekly uploads again. Um, but yeah, thank you for having me, guys. I've an absolute pleasure. It's been great to chat to you guys as well. Oh. And hey. uh, to be a part of this. Thank you. Hey, how, how about one sellout thing? All right. If you want Mr. Ian back for a round two in the near future, like the video. <laughs>
<laughs> should we set we should we set a like goal? I don't know. Yeah, what, hell what yeah, we think it. We, we got a hundred on the last mini podcast. Three hundred. Yeah, three hundred. Let's get it. And three hundred. Round oh two God. with pure spam. I, I reckon. Go. I reckon three hundred is doable. His dirtiest secrets. I'm just, nah, I don't know. <laughs> dude, <laughs> we can delve into it if you want. I'm an open book, man. I hey, don't you know dude, we're saving yeah. for next time. I know there's loads I'm of stuff we could talk about, but yeah, dude, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. It's been awesome, man. Thank you very much.